In today's video, we're going to be building some chaos standing stones, complete with spatters of blood. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here, and I'm back with another terrain building episode. Let's just jump right into that video with a piece of 1 inch thick XPS foam. This is a pretty common build that I make. Standing stones in general are a common build that I make, and I usually make them about 4 inches tall, so you'll notice me taking out the what is it called the corner square thing i don't know the name of it the ruler that has the angle the 90 degree angle ruler i don't know the name of it but you'll notice i use that just just kind of make a measurement it's not too important to do measurements so if you're following along just go ahead and make whatever size you think you want you can make them bigger or smaller than what you see in this build after we get some rough rectangle shapes cut out I just go ahead and cut out the basic shape that I want the standing stones to be. And I try to vary it just a little bit from standing stone to standing stone. Just having that little bit of variation will add a little bit more visual interest to the build. Then I just start carving away with my utility knife, with my snap off utility knife. And I'm just trying to get some rough cuts so it looks like it's hewn stone. And we are just gonna fast forward through this part. I think you get the idea. Now I take out my 1.4 millimeter ballpoint pen and on each standing stone I'm going to do a different chaos symbol. And since Warhammer is full of different chaos symbols, when I designed this I was just going to do like generic chaos symbols but then I got the idea to use like each of the four types of demons. So I got a Nurgle, a Korn, a Slanesh, and a Zinch. Zinch? Zinch? How do you say that? I don't know. Let me know in the comments how to say that. Yeah, and then I use some a couple generic ones because I wanted six. That way, I mean, at the time that I designed this type of standing stone, you could use like objective terrain. A lot of people wanted six pieces for the objectives. So I decided to do six, even though it's not a typical number I do. I'd usually do like five or seven because that just tends to look better as a group. So anyway, I just use my 1.4 millimeter ballpoint pen to go ahead and carve the symbols into the stones and if you want to know the exact pen that i use or an or a close match you can go down to the description and check out the affiliate links and i have those available for us canada and the uk right now so definitely go check that out if you want to buy if you buy from amazon you can go ahead and check that out no pressure there it just helps out just a little bit then i take out my piece of road asphalt you can use whatever texture you want, aluminum foil, road asphalt, rock, a little roller that you've made. There's lots of cool texture rollers now. I'm actually thinking about like getting a rolling pin and like a wooden rolling pin and adding a bunch of like milliput and rocks and things like that and just be able to do the whole sheet of big styrofoam. I build a lot of the big terrain boards so that'd be really handy. Okay, now the bases. I'm going to be using foam core bases. I know not everybody enjoys working with foam core. It does warp if you're in like some humid places or I, th I find that it only warps if you use big chunks of the foam board and then glue it down. So with these, it's not going to matter too much. Although if you want to work with your MDF and get out your tools or cut over and over and over and carve over and over and over with your MDF, you can go ahead and do that. Or you can just use a thinner piece of foam. Anyway... I just cut out these, these are two by three squares and I've beveled the edges, beveled the edges. I cut the corners off and then I start beveling the edges just with my knife. And you do the same thing if you're working with MDF, it just takes longer and your hand hurts more after. And it's heavier. And if you like heavier, that's good. I prefer not to have the heavier. And these hold up just fine. After I bevel all the edges, I just round out all the bases just a little bit. I just like to make them look a little bit more organic. I'm going to hot glue these to the base. And I don't always use hot glue when I do this. Sometimes I use the all surface liquid nails. I showed that in my last video if you're interested in using that. It just takes like a couple hours longer to dry. It's really good and, and it's not water based so it doesn't warp the bases. So you don't have to worry about all that. Yeah, we just stick them in the middle of the base on each of these and then I hot glue some larger pebbles to the bases. This is for decoration and also to weigh the bases down just a little bit, kind of multifunctional addition to the base. And then more work on the bases. And now I'm using a mixture of 
PVA glue and black paint and we are adding it to the base and sprinkling sand over the base. And you can use just PVA glue. I've been enjoying using the glue mixture. I know it doesn't make much of a difference on these bases because the bases are black so it's kind of hard to see but usually i'm doing that mixture because it's easier to see where i've painted and i can add the sand pretty easily you'll see that i'm dipping this the bases into the sand too it's not always ideal because sometimes you get sand on the bottom of the bases and it doesn't look as clean but if you're careful it works good and it doesn't get sand all over your desk now we're gonna paint our standing stones black and i'm using that same mixture the pva glue and black paint and i use latex house paint because i've mentioned that before i use latex house paint otherwise i'll go through like so many oh that reminds me we got two patrons this week let me see and we need to do a shout out to these awesome awesome people so two patrons this week and super appreciative of that we got calvin anthropos thank you for joining the league of alchemists forgive me if i say your last name wrong and we got j r that's his username i know he's got the same name as me jeremiah he joined the wizards academy and super appreciate that nothing gives me more motivation than than people who want to see the work i'm doing and i don't know there's there's they want to see it so much that they're they're willing to help support the channel through that it's inspiring to me and i hope that i'm giving that much inspiration back to you guys it's just it's just amazing it's amazing how how good this crafting community is really enough of that we painted these black on to the next part we got to set them aside to dry for a while and I was kind of in a hurry to make these so I I don't know what I was thinking I decided get these q-tips out dab off a little bit of black paint so they dry faster it was working okay so I was like oh yeah I got cotton balls that was a bad idea look at that look at that oh that's horrible just leaving that big old cotton I think there could be a use for this though I was thinking that after watching this I'm like yeah we could find some sort of use for this but definitely not drying the black paint so I just got a paper towel and I dabbed around the base it was having issues drying if you have time let it dry overnight I had like a couple hours I use a mixture I use two different colors of gray I use a lighter gray and a darker gray I believe so I think the names of the colors okay I know for sure it's apple barrel pewter gray and I think that the Anita's one that's the lighter gray is rainy day gray I don't load a whole lot into the brush and I just slop it on randomly. I take some of the darker gray and I slop it on and then I take some of the lighter gray and then I slop it on. And it's going to have this nice subtle mottled effect. You're not going to see it very much in the end, but I find that it does give a little bit more realism to the gray. So yeah, all the stone areas, including the stone, the larger stones on the bases, I paint with these grays. And then we take out some brown and... I use two different colors of brown here too. I don't always. It doesn't show up as much on the base, but I can't remember the colors I used. I kind of switch up the colors on the base a lot. It ends up being brown, basically. And I'm using like a like a topish brown and an orangish brown. And it shows up a little bit better than, than the grays. But like I said, the base is going to be covered by like grass and stuff like that and blood. So it's not too... Too important i just do the same thing to the bases as i did with the stones again this as i've said in the in past videos this is one of my favorite pens i love this pen this is a tombow brush pen and they actually come in like variety packs and things like that and it has different softnesses on the brush softnesses softness they have different softness that sounds weird softnesses wow why does that sound so weird anyway and it's actually like good quality ink inside the brush so it's not gonna like fade over time or something like that okay and now we're gonna do some dry brushing and I'm using antique I'm using antique white and I'm using just a normal flat brush to dry brush and I use a flat brush I like it better like I've said I like it better than the makeup brushes and it's okay if you like makeup brushes I'm not gonna hate on those they just have a different look than what I'm going for basic dry brushing techniques you all know the drill if you happen to be getting some value today, then I'd really appreciate it if you'd like this video. It not only shows me that you like the content that I'm providing, but it also shows YouTube that it's worth watching. 
and we'll get it out to more crafters like you and me. So I take out some green. I don't remember what color green this is. It's Anita's. It's like a medium green. I think it's like called foliage green. I don't know. I was using the Michaels brand. What is that? Craft Smart. I was using Craft Smart paint, but Michaels in my area closed, so I'm not able to buy that anymore. So I've had to adjust my paint recipes and use other paints. Okay, so I take a kind of smaller brush, one that can be beat up. A lot of my brushes are just beat up anyway. And this is kind of like a scumbling technique. And I don't know how to explain that. Uh, let's see. I'm basically just scrubbing the paint in. And it's going to give like more subtlety to the gray. It's going to make it almost look like... People have described it as having a slime on these. But that's not really what I was going for. I just knew that I was going to have like blood splatters. And, I, and green is a complementary color of blood. And I figured green can also represent some sort of moss that's growing on these. So I added some green to these standing stones for the design element. Like I've said in a lot of my videos, I'm more about the design than the realism. And this honestly even adds a little bit of realism, but it's not on purpose. I just wanted the bright red to stand out. And that green's going to help it stand out a lot. Now I take some Mod Podge, add some grass to the bases. This is just Woodland Scenics grass. I believe it's dark green. Also, on my website, you can buy shirts like this. I designed this shirt. I drew the mimic, the chest pains, everything. Go check it out. I got chest pains. I got three different monsters on there like this, these meme monsters. So we got chest pains. We got the eyesore, which is a beholder. And we got the kitty whippins, which is a cute little, what are they called? Displacer beast. So check those out. The link to my website is in the description. Now we're going to do the blood red. We got the crimson ink, and then we got high gloss varnish. And it's pretty thin, and I add about half and half. It's gonna make the ink nice and shiny. And then just a couple drops of airbrush flow improver, because we're gonna be putting this through an airbrush. Okay, and then I stir it all up. Still deciding whether it's too thick to go through my airbrush. Usually I don't put it through my airbrush. Usually I take a brush and I just spatter. I'll show you with my thing like this. Just spatter or go like that, okay? You go like that and it's gonna catapult the... Oh, that's another way. There's several different ways I do. I do this and that's gonna do like small little streaks. It's gonna get all over the place or that and it does big ones um, or that. And it's more controlled if you do that, but I like to get different varieties. This time, I decided to take out my airbrush. Okay, so if you take off the nozzle of your airbrush, it's gonna do a spatter like we want. And you'll see I just airbrush these spatters on. It works pretty good. And now I want to add some bigger blood streaks. So, like these stones are bleeding. I just use a brush. You'll see I use a brush. I fill it up. I fill it up too much. Normally, you don't want to paint like this. You don't want it to drip. But we wanted it to drip with the blood. Because it's blood. Yeah, you'll see me use a few different techniques for getting the blood on there. Even just painting it on in streaks. Putting some pools on the bases. Letting it pull down onto the bases. This is really the final step. This is actually something I do after I matte varnish it. If I do the blood before I matte varnish it, the blood's going to be matte. And I want the blood to be that nice shiny. That's why I added the high gloss varnish to it and not just some sort of medium. Definitely if you do this, add it after you do the matte varnish. It's just going to be a varnish as well. So, I mean, it's half gloss varnish and gloss varnish actually holds up better than matte varnish. So definitely do that. Let's do some comment shout outs real quick. The Crazy Crafter said, this dungeon is extremely impressive. You totally should take it to a convention and run players through it. That would make for an awesome video for the channel too. I didn't even think about filming it. I, I was just thinking it would be cool to run at a convention, but that's a good idea. Um, I appreciate that. Also, if you guys haven't seen the Crazy Crafter live stream, definitely go check it out. Uh, if you go to my last video and go to the description, you'll see, you'll, or the description, the comments. Go to click on his channel, go to his live stream. If I remember to link it on here, we'll link it on here. Also, Daniel Trainer said, this is the best video yet because the commentary is the best. The best. That's, that's funny. I got self-conscious about the commentary, so I, I mean, before, I figured people would just want to see my process, and so I had like minimum commentary in earlier videos. I tried not to ramble. I was really focused on not rambling, and now I've actually gotten a good, good amount of feedback on that. 
Let's do one more shout out. Oh, I'm gonna shout out Phantasmique again. Cause I pronounced his name wrong last time. He said, just watching the end of the video and got a shout out. Thanks man, I appreciate it. By the way, it's pronounced Phantasmique. Still owe you a remastered version of the track. I'm not really worried about a remastered version. I think if you don't know, Phantasmique did the background music to my videos and he did an amazing job and I'm definitely going to be using him again. If you're looking for some sort of music, go check him out. He has, he even has some free music you can use on his channel. So he has a channel and he has a Fiverr account. If you're interested in buying like your own soundtrack from him, definitely check him out. He's an awesome dude. He also likes heavy metal. So he's not just doing the D&D &D music. And I know a lot of D&D &D players like that kind of music. So check out his stuff. Now, if you're interested in making other wargaming terrain for your table, check out this video. This is how I do my basic modular hills. They're very useful and they're very easy to make. So definitely check those out.